Great, thank you. Just in case anybody says anything yeah, important. Yeah. No, no, this is true. This is good. So we're just talking about uh, the issue of communications. So, yes. I'll even put aside my breakfast cereal since <laughs> we started the recorder. <laughs> um, oh, we, well, I was saying that this 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 man who killed 50 people in New Zealand everyone's trying to get a message out and that's probably what he's doing. Um, and that's what I think this frustration that a lot of people are feeling. I think that's where all this, this mass violence is coming from frustration, a lot of, of a feeling of being disempowered and then not being able to communicate that and not being, you know, having the messages controlled by you know, major media and, trying to get an, 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 another message out whether we agree with it or not there's a, i think there's, that's i think it all comes to communication and there's a there's a toxic brew there because because <clears throat> you've got on the one hand the messages that you that we have human rights inalienable and we have right to self-expression inalienable right to free <clears throat> speech and yet the feeling is i'm not being heard or my tribe is <clears throat> not heard and right. which is which you can absolutely look and see that if you don't speak your message in a way that shows you've been had got a degree or you've got that your your wordage is a certain way that your grammar is exactly correct this is a big problem in england if you have a working class accent and you're, you're, you know, you, you, you have very working class grammar, nothing wrong with that, but it's not standard in England. You, you just get dismissed immediately. And there's, ra well, there should be rage about that. Well, there's a whole bunch of things that get you to be dismissed. And, you know, you, to really function at a high level in the world, you have to be able to look past those superficial things like, you know, the grammar that you were raised with. But um, I think that the, the way the media is controlling the message has been, has been a real problem. Um, you're, not on, you're not on Quora anymore. It's, I haven't seen you. Well, I'm, I, I am aware it's, I'm not. Uh, you learn. I, I don't go there very often. Most, okay. It's just a choice I made, yeah. I should remember my phone. Yeah, that's always good. Work. Ah, uh, there's Laura. Who could that be? <laughs> Hello. Hi, guys. Hi. 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 Sorry, I'm late. Yeah, it happens. I had there. a fight with my um, headset, so I had to stick sellotape on the ends. It decided to come apart. Oh. So I thought rather than do it, trying to talk to you guys, I'd just do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Take> it. <laughs> That's quite a blouse you have on there. It looks like it's made of flowers. It's a dress. It's a dress yeah. from one of my adoptive daughters. I'm accumulating um, um, a bigger family, soul tribe. So she's uh, adopted me as her mum. Oh, so nice. um, she I turned bet. up with this gift. Yeah, Hasina. So we, I feel very blessed. Laura, we were just talking, we're on record, recording right now and we're... Oh, sorry. Uh, um, what was I going to say? Yeah. And yeah, we were just, it, it, Lee was bringing it back to um, communication and, okay. and how I, I, I agree with you, Lee, that, that just how are we communicating in this moment is so key. And, and we were just talking about how if we feel disempowered, we might feel the way to get our message across is to find a gun, um, go to two mosques. And this, is, this happened. We're, I don't think it's a good idea, but this happened. And to indeed kill... 50 people 
in Christchurch in New Zealand, a very traumatized city because it had a massive earthquake a couple of years ago, and 50 people is 40% more than the annual homicide rate for the entire country. Mm. Yeah, so it's big. Um, but we were just talking, well, you know, it starts in, where else can it start? But right where we're talking right now to say, mm. well, am I listening to this person? And of course, online is the same thing. Am I, if I'm in an, in an interaction with somebody, am I really listening? Yeah. It's, well, where else can we go? We can talk all we like about what the world should do, but we're, we're only here. <laughs> what yeah. else can we do except apply yeah. our wonderful brains and our hearts and our minds to, to mm -hmm. say what's working in this communication between the three of us or, or more people watching? Hey, we should Facebook like, stream this one of these days. Anyway. Sure. Yeah, no, that'd be fun. That would be fun. It adds a different quality. That would be fun, actually. I'll think about that. But communication, yeah. is it okay if I say yeah, something? Yeah. I have had experience of communication with certain people who you could listen to them, get everything they're saying. And when you try and share a different viewpoint, mm. they are, I wouldn't say not listening, <clears throat> incapable of accepting anything outside of their own belief mm. yeah. and unfortunately like this young guy that uh, murdered all these people in Christchurch he had a very 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 strong set of beliefs based on his uh, limiting beliefs growing up uh -huh. Did you have a look at some stuff I've been in New Zealand oh, yes I did yes yeah. I did he had, he had a he had a mm. manifesto and if the mm. manifesto is genuinely mm. not a false flag, yeah. his, he has a, a huge xenophobia mm. based on, well, I don't know if that's the right word. I, that's the only word I can think of. He has no issues with any color, race, creed, sexual genders, whatever. He has issues with foreigners being in his country. And he feels that everybody belongs in their own country and uh -huh. should never leave that country. Mm. And so based on that, he just went on a rampage. But he's an Except he's an Australian who attacked yeah. people in New Zealand. So he did happen to leave his exactly. country. And he was right. And, he should have stayed in his country. <laughs> but he's not an Australian. He's oh, possibly he Irish. Oh, I see. Or, come on, who lived America? And Australia are two countries that are full of people from all over mm. the world. Mm. Settlers. Mm. Unless you're indigenous, everybody is from somewhere else. Also, everybody. Also, I've the, got groups also, also the Maori in New Zealand. I'm born in New Zealand. Maori are born mm. in New Zealand, but they came a thousand years ago and there was yeah. a group before them and they got wiped out by the Maori. They were called the Maori Ori. But, yeah. but when you look at his attitude, he's talking about Muslim faith, because Muslim is not a color or creed. You've got mm. Muslims in China and Japan, worldwide, Bali, everywhere you go in the world. It's a religion. Mm. But in his way of thinking, he was thinking not Muslim. Mm. He was thinking foreigner. You know, yeah. and that was more frightening because it shows how much lack of logic mm. his manifesto had. Because if mm. he's talking about people staying in their own lands and because, you know, every piece of land says white with slit eyes mm. and, and mixed race, barley, but, you know, yeah. come on. So, but in his yeah. sense of logic, I don't know what you call mm. it, mm. um, tunnel vision. His, his worldview. His worldview, he forgot that New Zealand is also not white. So if he really thought about it, he would have just killed everybody that wasn't Maori. And he'd also, and he did it, he'd he'd also have to kill them, them too. 
Is so really, when you look at every single country, I mean, uh, everything's mixed to a certain degree. You know, so for me, it's like I feel so <clears throat> heartbroken for him because this is a step he's yeah. taken that yeah. he cannot take back. I know. It's, it, the consequences for him are, are horrendous. And the families and everybody, the far reaching worldwide, it's. And yeah. on the strength of that, I believe that there's been atta an attack since then of Muslims killing Christians. Yeah, yeah. And this was a couple a day or so after that, somewhere else. Yeah. And I'm just like, I was sobbing. I just thought, it's almost like something's kicked this off and it's just going to have another hatred thing, which yeah. we're all one family. We're mm. humanity. Mm. You know. Well, I, and, I, I'm going. Sorry, Lee. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go on, go on. I'm done. I could talk forever. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed. <laughs> you know, I, I think it's you know it's a return to tribal it's a return to tribalism, and um, mm -hmm. I think it's been spurred on by identity politics. You know, oh, yes, we we started awesome. this identity we started this identity politics, and now it's like whose tribe are you? You know, and I've always been against it, and and it's just so antithetic to like Buddhist principles, which teaches that we're all one and. And that, in fact, is the case. You know, we are not separated uh, in any meaningful way. And yet, you know, we create these artificial distinctions and and set them up as, you know, better and worse. And it's just, it's, it's, it's polarized duality in its worst format. You know? mm. I, but it is, I'm, again, sorry. Uh, please, Laura. It's, again, divide and conquer, divide and conquer, Absolutely. divide and conquer. Absolutely. That's, yeah. That's, and, but you know what's sad? The format has never changed. And yet yeah. people are not seeing. If you repeat something often enough, people will say, oh, that's Lee. That's what he always does. Oh, that's Mo. He always says that. But they're not seeing the format that has not. They're not clever. So the tribe is humanity. Yeah. That's the, and indeed, Muhammad was was a, a, you know a radical, uh, um, I would say, the first use of his understanding of tribe was very was actually very very helpful when he talked about the ummah, which he talked about the that that you 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 were part of a bigger tribe. Which is the Ummah, which is the the Muslim, uh, those who are part of the Muslim faith, um, mm -hmm. and I'll say it here and now, just to be very clear, is yeah, I can do it. I, I don't mind doing it. If you, uh, it's a different subject. I won't go down there. But he very carefully said he was working in in. Uh, in his in Saudi Arabia now Saudi Arabia and he saw all these tribes fighting each other and he said let's make a bigger tribe now of course then that tribe didn't include everybody in the world and that tribe then went started having wars with other tribes but still he was making a bigger tribe and so what you're talking about Laura is is making even a bigger tribe which is the tribe of humanity all of humanity I would like to go back to a question, um, just a very practical question is what do you, which we asked, which is what do you do with a man who's so fixed that he's willing to strap on guns and go and kill 50 people? How would you get in a conversation with somebody like that? And my own response would be, you can't have an effective conversation, effective communication, without more and more becoming aware of context. Context. Before the words start, what is the context for that conversation? What is, what is his context and what is your context? If his context is some people I can talk with, other people, just not possible, and if I go up to that person 
and I'm already in the category of it's not possible to have five words with this person. That's where we have to start. And at the same online is, is to begin to say, what is your context for this conversation? If the person says, I believe I can have a conversation with anybody or it's, or alternatively, it's not possible to talk with certain people, that's where you begin. You don't begin with any discussion about should foreigners be in a country or not, or anything like that. What is the context? And I found it very helpful recently to, with more and more people to begin with, it's okay to have two points of view. And at the end of the conversation, there are still two, clearly two points of view. And if somebody says, no, at the end of this conversation, one person's going to be right and the other person's going to be wrong, <clears throat> I'm going to say, let's just say you're a nice person, love you lots, but let's not have a conversation because it won't work. Mm -hmm. Let's have a conversation about that before we get onto this per the person's favorite topic, their favorite hobby horse, their favorite campaign. So we have to talk about context and it doesn't happen. Everybody's silent. Well, I'm not sure what that means. Well, um, trying to tie it all together. Uh, mm -hmm. um, I think what's going on is that there's a, there's a lot of attempt at messaging and that um, everything's almost become a brand even your politics and your religion has become a brand that you identify with mm -hmm. and so and, and then that's been that's been uh, reinforced with the media the media you know each each media outlet has its own very strong biases and and then there's some that don't have that don't present some points of view at all you know mm -hmm. it's like some points of view don't get hurt and so the the discussion gets uh, curtailed because of of lack of being able to reach people. So I started to tell you, just as Laura signed on, that in Quora there's a large issue now because um, they collapsed an answer that had forty seven thousand upvotes. If you you know what that means. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they well, why, did they, why did they do that? What was the what was Facebook? Well, they, they, they never they never divulge why they collapsed an answer. You know, as it was, thousand. Yeah, so it was it was for uh, violate. I think well, it was forty five thousand when they collapsed it, and now what's happened, which is really interesting, is myself and several other people. Last time I looked, there were thirteen or fourteen of us that have dug it out of the collapsed state and re-shared it. And now that's gotten, that's gotten like 2,000 upvotes in a day, you know. Wow. Um, I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd, love to, I'd love to uh, see it. Well, go on, just look at my um, profile. It's, okay. it's, the top of my, it's at the top of my profile. And you'll see a discussion about there and you'll see that I'm involved in it. But mm. um, it's, you know, there's a real lack, there's a real sense of censorship and I think people, that's very frustrating for people. You know, if you're not, like you talked about the context, if you're not in the, uh, uh, lining up with the context of what, and the agenda of someone else's tribe, that tribe is is now, in t and instead of tr usually mass shooting, they're just trying to shut you down, not mm. allow you to be heard. Mm. Mm. And that somehow that's okay. Well, it's just the way, that's what we've come into. And rather than having open debates and saying, oh, let's look at all sides of this, mm. it's now become, we're right, you're wrong, and we're, we're either not going to listen to you or we're, and we're going to also shut you down so that you can't be heard by anyone else because we don't want to have your ideas circulated. So I think that creates a lot of frustration for the disenfranchised and disempowered. And I think that's the basis for these people going nuts and shooting people. I mean, it's like, I want to be heard. You know, <clears throat> yeah. whether they're right or wrong, you know, we could have an open debate about whatever his grievance was. There could have been an open debate about it, but I mean, 
I'm not saying that there was or wasn't because I don't even know what his grievance was, but I think that that's what's going on in a lot of these cases. So let's, let's go back to how the conversation we're having right now is, it just really gets granular, it's definitely not a globish word, um, gets <clears throat> into the very fine detail of how, how are we doing this conversation right now? What, what is going well and how can we do it better so that each person, it comes down to the one value of this, this group is, is inclusion. How yeah. do we include more? And it's even more than how, how do we include the idea of Lee or the idea of Laura, the idea of me, but actually deeper than any idea, even the idea of how we look or even how we feel, how do we include more so that no part of us feels, you know, so there's a feeling that, that we feel heard we feel heard yeah does that's, that sound, does really that sound right yeah laura what do you I think, think? Hmm? yes lee no oh, i think that's the crux of it i think that's that's what i'm sort of saying is that people are not feeling heard and feel people are feeling um uh, squashed um and it's even, you know, it, it feels insidious to me. It feels like it's not just a natural thing. Like Laura said earlier something about, I don't remember exactly what, but it made me think that sometimes I think that this is like undermining by foreign governments. I mean, they're intentionally coming in here, trying to split us up, divide and conquer. That's what Laura was saying. There, I feel that potentially this is for, these, if it was a foreign government, they could not do a better job of disrupting our, our internal affairs than having us tribalize and fight each other over all these petty or not petty but issues that and then not allow free discussion about them so it's well, destroying i democracy. agree i agree it must be it must be very hard lee and actually it, it actually you, just the way you just spoke it, please correct me if i misunderstood what you just said but i just actually in this moment i felt a, a big uh, strong feeling of compassion for being an American at this time, because I agree. It seems to be that there, there are very strong forces that are working very hard to, on the one hand, we can talk about the, the, that America is the shining light was at least the shining light on the Hill. I mean, I, if you look at the U S constitution, it's it's an amazing document. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm not yeah. saying it's perfect. Um, yeah. You know, they have their the in there the right to arm bears, no, right to bear arms. Um, <laughs> um, I think bears already come. Well, that's another subject. But, but anyway, nothing's perfect. But it's an amazing document that. Yeah. Brought, because it's it, if you think of the diversity of America, and what it's trying to achieve of coming together, and the current situation of tremendous separation and division, and and other challenges too, you know the the, the capture of government by by corporate interest, all of this, and I, it must be very challenging to to want to support where you live yeah at the moment it must be very hard it is it's, it feels very unstable to me i mean yeah and i don't know what to do about it but i spent a lot of time thinking about it but i you know to pull this all back i think that the solution is better communication and and, and right now the sense is that there's there are um, very powerful attacks on preventing communication so mm. i think that what 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 we're at least talking about here is is central in in to resolving this tribalism. You know, the other tribe doesn't become the other does doesn't become the enemy if you really understand the other tribe. If you really understand the other tribe, 
you'll see that they're just like you, you know, in a lot, in most fundamental ways. So th the reason they become our enemies is because there's misunderstandings and miscommunications. And then pretty soon people are throwing arrows, you know, shooting it's, arrows and throwing spears. It's, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, it seems a diff big difference I've, I've always noticed between Europe, Europe and America is that Europeans are absolutely willing to discuss politics and they have to, they're confronted by difference because people speak different languages. So, so in a way that's more obvious, yes, many people speak many languages in America, but the uniting language is English. And you right. can, in an American context, I lived there six years, you can say, oh, you don't speak English, I don't have to learn your language or adjust for that in a way that has to happen to a greater yeah. or lesser degree in, in uh, Europe. Well, we weren't forced to learn another language. I mean, I was forced to take another language in high school, but then I could, you know, quickly forget whatever I learned because I, we know wherever we go, we can get by with English. And so there's no, you know, if, if you speak another language, your primary, even, even something popular like German, I mean, you still have to learn English, you know? So, um, and then if you're from somewhere even more remote than Germany, you know, you, it's absolutely required that you learn two or two or more languages. So we became lazy because of, of our, you know, I guess language, the power of the English language in the world. But um, I think that that's actually uniting. I mean, I, I think that the world would be better off and if we just all spoke English, but then, you know, that makes it easy for me. So. <laughs> ah, let's discuss. Would it be better? No. Laura says no. no. Why? Why? Because English is a corrupt language. Oh, okay. Different directions. It's, it's, no, it's black <laughs> magic. You can look it up yourself. In fact, I'm not even going to explain it. If you're interested, look mm. it up. It was invented and it, the words that we use imprison us and slave us and keep us at a certain level of being. And there's different meanings to words. So the elite have an understanding of English as rulers. And it really does work differently because they understand well, no, they don't understand. We understand. We stand under, whereas the elite don't. They stand over because they understand a word, one word, can mean two, three different things. Okay. So English is actually one of, as far as I know, um, one of the most dirty, corrupt languages that keeps people at a certain level just by uttering the words you keep, it's like if you walk around with your head down, shoulders go down, you feel low. If you walk around with your shoulders up and your head up, you feel higher, you feel better. So unwittingly, most of the world are using a language that's not actually good for us. That's a form of, form of programming and we don't even know it. Hmm. Yeah. I have yeah. a story from yesterday, just to say, I, I, I uh, understand a lot of what you're saying, Laura, is in German, mm -hmm. I asked, asked um, a native German spe speaker, of course, the word for news, we mm -hmm. in English we have news is what's new. But in German, you have the, the, the word Nachricht. And the, 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 it comes from a verb um, to richten nach. And one meaning of that is to reframe. <laughs> it means some event happens in the world and then the news organization reframes that into a story with a certain mm. framing, reframe. Yeah. And she said, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It could be, could, it can mean to reframe. So people are watching the news, what's new, but at the same time getting, getting the media and the media owners mm slant spin opinion about that about that piece of news mm -hmm. but interestingly in england news is seen as not in the um context of 
dictionary it's seen as the truth yes yeah it's seen as information yes yeah. it's not seen as new new you know information and so yeah. for most people they listen to the reframe which is a yeah. lot usually a lie a lot of it is actually not true down to actors pretending to have a bombing and yet i've seen these things um and what happens is when you try and tell somebody oh did you know yeah i saw it on the news awful isn't it and i think they haven't even checked we are international global you can i can contact any number of people around the world and say oh my god this happened on the news is it true and they'll go no and I know for a fact, years ago, a friend of, I had friends from Egypt, and I still have friends that go there quite often. And it was like the news was saying, don't go there. It's dangerous. If you go over there, you'll get shot. You'll get attacked for being Western. I mean, there was a whole bunch of stuff destroyed their um, tourism. And then a friend of mine, um, he actually came from Egypt. He was in contact like every couple of weeks with his family. And they kept saying, no, everything's okay. So in his mind, being in UK, he thought, okay, they're just being nice. They don't want me to worry. So he got to a point, fever pitch, when all of it was really going mad all over the press worldwide. He went out there. He was in a rage when he got back. He said, everything is beautiful. They're having weddings on boats. People are, they're living a normal life. So he said, he doesn't understand where this propaganda was coming from. You have little incidents that are blown out of proportion, but then not only are they blown out of proportion, they're tagged and stretched and somebody will bring it up again and they bring it up so that to anyone else, it's like, oh no, you don't want to get there. Well, that's, yeah, this will, it'll be interesting to see what they do with New Zealand in this way. It's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, my own reaction in this moment, Laura, was the key point you're making is the influence of media. And at the same time, I was hearing what you were saying about uh, the creation of media events. And I was listening to my own reaction and thinking, it's so great we have this discussion like we have and each mm. person has a different you know feeling of what's real or true and mm. and even for and from you know we we've often talked about this for me the question are there really actors who really create media events maybe i've got a different view viewpoint from you on that or maybe I've got less evidence about it than you have. Maybe you've studied it for years in detail. And I was just enjoying thinking, hey, there's some way that we, because of the value of inclusion, we can, we can, uh, <laughs> Sorry. it would demand a diversity of, idea of, of um, acceptance of diversity also about our worldviews, not only values, but also what we think reality is. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying, Laura? Yeah. But yeah. Um, what I'm saying is it's always, it's the way it's played it's also wondering what the intention is behind it yeah because it's like there's all sorts of things like a massive flood going on right now right now this minute somewhere in the world somewhere else they've had you know tragedies and yet certain things are brought up and you think well, what is the propaganda what is it they're trying to propagate and to me it looks like they want everybody to start fighting in fighting again mm. whereas you know who knows is this guy for real? Is he a fool guy? We know we, about the Kennedys and all sorts of things. We need to, we need to include, we, we, we need to include some level of doubt. Whatever he may we, not. Whatever we get heard as, that is an authority outside of ourselves. A, a piece of, yeah. I'm having a conversation with my mother at the moment. She's amazing. Mm. She's 93. 
she's still so fit. But, you know, just to say the reality of this conversation mm -hmm. is more real than anything you read because it's why because it's happening here and now it's because real. we know yeah. it's happening because it's, we're using our own eyes ears to know it's mm. happening now and if we read something we're reading about something somewhere else written that someone else wrote <laughs> it could be the most highest level of journalism <laughs> the most mm -hmm. objective piece of reporting, and it will never be as real as what's going on between us right now. Cannot be. Because mm -hmm. it's here and now. Here and now. And it's a simple message, but speak for myself. I have to remind myself what's real now. What's here now. What is no question without dispute. Without dispute, I'm talking right now in this conversation, not the other two. No dispute, no question. There are three people. We're experiencing a conversation between three people. That's, there's no discussion. That's something we can agree upon, I think. And if somebody says, no, no, you're in your own illusions, then we'll talk about that. It's simple. That's the thing for all of us just to go to stay with simple, 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 simple facts. And not to exclude other information, but it's not the simple fact. Well, there's that what we do in our personal lives, and then there's that which is done on the, you know, the larger level. And um, so there's a, there's a lot that we can keep in mind there, but I'm really trying to figure out ways of getting beyond the tribalism and, you know, mm. and, uh, and the larger picture, because I really think it's destroying our world. Tribal mm. is powerful. Tribe, yeah. tribe dynamics are very powerful. Well, it used to be two big pro tribes. It used to be the United States and Russia, you know, the Soviet Union or whatever it was. And mm -hmm. so the two big, you know, the superpowers. Well, now it's broken down, you know, with the fall of that it, and, and the decline of America, it's fallen into, you know, some much, much smaller tribes. And all these tribes that we are not even used to hearing about are popping up and saying, hey, we want to be heard too, you know. And then there's the guy that takes out and takes out 50 people so that he can be heard. Now, I agree we shouldn't give him... Um, an audience, you know, if, if the, we should make sure that we make the case very clean that that's not the way to get your message out. If you do that, you're not going to be get, you know, you're not going to get heard that way. But we well, need to come up with, we need to come up with ways to communicate. And and I agree with Laura, you know, after what she said about English language being, you know, it, it's been around for a long time and it has what I would call karma associated with it. It's got a lot of you know, different meanings for different people. And so what went through my mind when she, when she said that was, well, maybe, I don't know about this globish, but maybe, you know, we should just, you know, maybe one way out of this mess is to create a whole new language that doesn't have a history associated with it and mm -hmm. does not favor one tribe over another tribe, which is a whole new language that's very carefully derived by very smart people that, understand semantics you know there are there are some amazing languages out there like that and some really amazing ones where they've tried to break language down into the simple units independent of culture and there mm. are some amazing attempts and uh yes the argument is is strong and people of course also bring up Esperanto, but even Esperanto is built on Swahili. 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 How do you say it? Swahili. Swahili. How do you yeah. say it correctly? Swahili. 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 Okay. But interestingly, this is the thing. Um, it's again not understanding what the true agendas are, but it's like with anything. I believe intent behind things is everything. Mm. 
is everything because that's the magic that is the magic <laughs> our divine self that brings the intent so for me it's like when i look at all the youths worldwide they've got their own language now and it's what you call broken english a mix of this and a mix of that and everything is reversed and that tickles me no end because it's as if they've put their middle finger up to the authoritarian, you will speak this way, and said, well, actually, no. So in a way, it's almost like the true meaning of the words are being exposed because what we've been told is the opposite, and now the children are reversing it. So now what they say with a lot of the words actually is the true meaning. Mm -hmm. So I find that really like how clever the children are without even knowing it. So they're, oh, yeah. they're taking back control of language. Yeah. It's so true. I think it's evolving. Mm. I remember that, I mean, I'm thinking this is bringing up the story of the Tower of Babel for me, you yes. know. Yes. And I don't remember, I don't remember that entirely well, but I guess they were building some tower to God or something. And for some reason god didn't want to have this tower or something so he made everybody speak a different language and they all dispersed into tribes you know and i think that that story they, you know, they has led us. the tower of babel story was that um was that basically they they just they came together and united and were able to build this very very impressive structure and the story that's told is that the structure was so impressive it was uh, copying or mimicking God and God was like no no I'm the one at the top and nobody can copy me and I will <laughs> divide and rule and so yeah. I will give you different languages and different tribes so this is the story that's told but whether God was really God is another question yeah. yeah, for me, my understanding, it wasn't yeah, exactly. source. Exactly. It wasn't source. Yeah, exactly. yeah. scattered the tribes. Yeah. But I think it's a very important um, uh, story, you know. Yeah. And it's something to consider. And, and why did these ancient people tell this story? There must have been a reason for it. Um, <clears throat> So yeah. I think what we need to do is re reunite by having a common language or at least, yeah, you know, I think, I think because of what Laura said, every, every language, I mean, you mentioned Swahili or however you pronounce it. I mean, I have, I have mm -hmm. karma in my mind about that because I watched old movies about Swahili natives, you know, the jungle people, warriors and stuff. And so then I've got all my prejudice about around that. Um, that would, I mean, I don't really, I'm not really conscious of it, but it, you know, it, it's back there somewhere in my, in my childhood mind. So I think we do need to start over with something brand new. You know? and then how I, do you get the world's population to adopt it? I, I, it's a good, it's a really good question. And then it, also because it's the called the globish open space, I better complete something about that is these are the arguments I'm just putting them from my side. So this is absolutely a collective effort. So it's not, please, it's not me saying this is the way it has to be. Not at all. It's a discussion. Mm -hmm. Everybody can in, say, this is my understanding of Globish. But firstly, with Globish, it's, it is building on the current trend. And the trend is that every school has English. So everyone is learning some words of English. Very soon, there won't be anybody on the planet who didn't go through some years of hearing some English words. If Maybe it's already true now. Even in North Korea, I think there are also, some schools at least are, are, are learning some English. So that's a strong trend across the world. So it's it's looking and saying is there a language that's already can we build on trends and and this is so much more some many people come to me and say we need esperanto and i say well 
maximum two mil million people speak it. It's not, it's, it's, it's too far undeveloped to make it the world language. Whereas Globish is, has this strong connection with English. That's one point. The second point is, is that Globish, is, as I understand it, and people I'm talking with understand it, is it has a strong attitude of inclusion. So it has a strong attitude of diversity mm -hmm. and it's explicitly going back to context. It's explicitly saying we live in a world of many, many languages and the person whose first language is French will never be a person whose first language is Chinese. And they will always have some differences in values. And that difference yeah. will never be mm -hmm. able to be denied. A Chinese person will still be born in one country and a, a Swahili speaker from Kenya will still come from Kenya and this will remain. And so the, the unity will be a unity in a deep, deep, deep understanding of, of difference. And it gets yeah. so deep that we can have a conversation right now and fully d more and more deeply understand Lee will may remain a beautiful example of being Lee, Laura, a beautiful example of being Laura and me, me, and this will not change. And we, we won't maybe never, have the feeling of complete shared understanding between us, even in the conversation right now. So the, mm. the, the feeling of the knowing of diversity and globish um, difference is so fully part of the conversation. And given so much space, it starts to relax. Ah. I can really be me. I can really be, for example, someone who in my mind is thinking, hopefully just in my mind, maybe violent thoughts. And there's space for all of it to be there without going back to this, this, this man who killed 50 people. Maybe there's a way to, to include his ideas, his talking, his yeah. being in a way where he feels, ah, I can be me and I don't have to act so extremely. I don't know. Maybe it's not possible. Laura, Laura. Okay. When you're looking at um, education, we know around the world um, there's been a massive, um, uh, uh, Lee, I don't know if you're aware, I'm looking into this um, emergence of a place, uh, uh, an empire, a full empire that covered Africa, America, India, Europe, a lot of places, and it was called Tartaria. Uh, Christopher Columbus, quite a few others, they've got proper maps on it, huge place, blah, blah. So for me, it looks like there was a massive mudslide and we're not talking the biblical Noah thing. And it was known, uh, it's known about throughout. There are evidence of it, specific buildings that are across all the lands that were part of Tartaria. At this point, I don't know if it's a, a red flag trying to confuse us and send us off. But from what they're saying is by the seven, late 17th century, um, settlers, children, foundlings, and I'm sure you've heard that word, were taken from Tartaria, put around the land, separated off, and are completely set. So everything that the children, which I believe is probably five to six generations ago, so it's in our span, not thousands of years ago, and what they're saying is they were reset, they were told a new story, they were turned against each other, the divide and rule and conquer, Oh, di uh, di conquer, divide and rule. And so children have grown up, uh, our ancestors, recent ancestors, believing, one, that these amazing buildings were built in the 18th century. No, they weren't. They were inherited by the conquerors who destroyed the empire and spread out. 
And so all of these things going on is got me to a point where I'm actually diving into a lot of different areas to do with all of it. So from properties to genetic, there's so much I'm looking at because I'm thinking, whoa. So it, I've always known a lot of the stuff we were told isn't true. But then I realized the whole thing is to keep everybody divided, keep them, I mean, bloodletting, massive wars. And, you know, I, I say some um, genocide, but obviously you guys won't. But to me, when you go in and bomb and kill a whole town, city area, I see it as that you know so it's the difficult thing of seeing what's going on especially with things like agenda 21 well so, it stands to reason so uh so that, sorry that, that <laughs> nothing, nothing nothing to say sorry for it's really i love this moment because also for somebody listening because you're presenting a um not mainstream worldview, mm. an alternative worldview. And so I'm, I'm listening carefully. And it's like, as I was listening, I was really listening. And I'm like, wow. And I was just letting myself see the world through your eyes. And I was enjoying mm. that. But it also, um, just talking about diversity and inclusion we because one value inclusion would be how do we have the conversation to include you or maybe one more person or 10 more people or 100 more people and they have different world views maybe somebody from china comes and they've been reading chinese world history you see and then how can we hold all of that together in a way that succeeds in, in having a continuing successful feeling of successful coming together with maybe more and more alternative worldviews, who knows? Mm. And, and how to succeed. And so it's super cool what you're sharing. It's difficult because I'm still studying but you know yeah, I will. Even, if, even, if you, even if you studied it sparkling my brain even, even if you studied it for 10 years and you were a phd in it mm. somebody else might come to what you're saying and be just mm. at the beginning of this subject mm. and so how do we include all of that diversity and difference mm. Interesting, huh? but the other, the other thing is you know we were talking about language and tower of Babel. Um, and from what I understand from texts about humanity pre, um, in Capri, there was no language because everybody was advanced. They were fully clairvoyant, medium, felt. So your conversations were feelings and actions and harmony and love. And everybody was in tune, like the movie Avatar everybody was in tune with everything and so for me it's like that language was introduced so that whoever whoever they were who came in taught the language as an added aspect because they didn't have the same ability to communicate with the earth the air the water each other the animals as humanity did this is what i understand so the introduction of language was a means to communicate with the beings that we were when the language was introduced. So initially it was a play thing where they started to experiment, but humanity being what we are, we're curious, we greedy for knowledge, we want to be good at things and we take it on board. So slowly but surely the um, ESP, if you like, was uh, less and less and less as language took over telepathy yeah everything clear sentience clairvoyance all of it so you know you could clear, when somebody clear, wanted to clear, sen our, our, uh, clear sentience would be uh knowing before you can understanding knowing something without Look, no that's clear cognizance clairvoyance um, clear sentience is feeling so i feel you mm -hmm. i feel lee 
-hmm. It's emotional, it's physical. Mm -hmm. But there's so many forms of it because we it, our body is our antenna, our energy field is our antenna. And so that was supposedly how it worked. And then somebody came along and thought, mm -hmm, children, let's teach them something new. And from there on in, it was a shift. Mm -hmm. So whoever they were that taught us the language over a period of time, then decided we were turning against them, trying to reach heaven to our divine source maker and thought, ah, and then, but they had the ability to mind control where there were, there were different languages. You see? We're, we've got a little problem right now because we're kind of coming towards the end and there's, you've put a lot on the table. So with the point, is I see globish, Swahili or anything like that that breaks down the barriers so that everybody, because the difference is your work mode shows about paying attention, feeling, giving space to each other, slowing down. What, what, I, find, what I find in this conversation right now is I feel at home, personally speaking for myself, I feel at home in this conversation. I feel at home in this connection with myself and connection with you. And because I feel at home, I can hear information that is, in parts of it at least, is very unfamiliar to me. And I can hear it without feeling like, oh my God, I'm going to lose my identity because I feel, mm. I feel at home now. And whatever comes of information is, is still less intense, less real than the reality of our meeting together now. That's what's mm. my own experience right now in this moment. Because I was hearing something that, a lot of it was was unknown to me before. Mm. So that was my experience. Lee, how was it for you? <laughs> uh, how was the conversation today? No, just just Laura shared something. You could share that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But different kind of about history and about what is our understanding of world history and what is the nature of language and perhaps and uh, uh, she was talking about intentional distortion of language so just in the last the last five minutes how how you responded as you heard this information well, I mean, I think that's what we've been talking about the whole time, really. I think Laura's maybe giving more details about specific instances of it, specific examples of it. But, mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's, I don't know. I've, uh, I don't know what else to say without repeating myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's but really, I gotta go. It's really, you you I, gotta go. You gotta go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I've got a day to. I got a busy day, and um, uh, my very, very nice. my very day nice. is also beginning. Yeah, that's the the dawn. No, we've yeah, got the same end. color, but mine's near the end. Hey, <laughs> how cool is that? So we're, we're kind of twilight, same. dawn. We're on the same planet. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess if we're going to do that, then let's see. Cool. That's Mount Tam. Oh, lovely. That's Mount Tam. Lovely. I love Mount Tam. Beautiful mountain. I'm envious. I haven't been. Yes, uh, <laughs> so maybe should we call it call it a day for today? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to need to get going, but yeah. uh, it's been a really fun discussion. I think we're. You know, we're agreeing on things, and so I, I just think it's more about what do we do about it. You know, what, what can I think we? we do? I think we're doing it. I, I think agree. It's great. I think there are things we're understanding more deeply between us. I, I invited 
a Burmese woman. She's new to the country. She'd be perfect to join the group. Um, I'm actually going to send a message to, to, to my sister who will give it to her. And mm -hmm. it would be great if, if she joins. And so I think, you know, if you feel somebody might enjoy this, we're, we're starting to, uh, like we talked about, we're yeah. understanding many things. It has value, I feel. But I think as, if, as more people join, it's going to be harder to have this free flowing conversation because, you know, we're already kind of running into each other a little bit. It's, it's going to require more structure, I think, of some sort. I'm not sure how we would do that. If we had 10 people with intense ideas like we all do, how would we manage that? This is, the, this, is, this is exactly the question. Can we keep these simple principles? I think, I absolutely think we can, but we will have to make it more explicit, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then can we go so? take over Sorry. the world with it. Yeah, but the other <laughs> thing is, when when somebody's English is literally a second language, yeah, um, it's going to slow things down anyway because we have to take the time to allow them to speak without feeling, oh my god, you know, I'm too slow and I can't get the right words. Because when when your Moroccan crew were on, they were adorable, yeah. but I could see sometimes it was scary for them because they were like trying to grasp the words, you know, their own trying to. You know, so, so, so it, I, you, you know, we're, we're enjoying, I'm enjoying very much this, mm -hmm. this ongoing discussion and the and friendship and all of that too. And so mm -hmm. it, it, it would be a shame to expand, but lose, you know, not honor what we're currently mm -hmm. enjoying. So I feel this is very much emergent it's just it's just mm. naturally growing like a natural plant and a plant doesn't try and kill off the earlier parts it just it just grows mm. but it, it also means we're in a situation where friends so yeah we wouldn't necessarily have to keep it to a tuesday night yeah exactly what i'm saying we could actually have conversations outside of there yeah. on zoom or yeah. face facebook or facetime so it's about just knowing that there isn't a limitation with i th i feel yeah. we've got beyond the oh this is a group on a wednesday right or oh, tuesday do you see what i mean so i mean i'll email you i'll talk to you but it's everybody you you both are just like jet setting and busy yeah. and i'm just i'm just here <laughs> um, I'm, a, I'm, anyway. aware, I'm aware about the time, um, I think, my feeling, mm. but this is re really great. This is super great. I really You guys it. have a beautiful day. Yeah. You too, dear. Nice it's to see my both. evening. <laughs> <laughs> Bonsoir, Eduma. Eduma.